uh, obviously we're, we're changing what we're doing to meet the challenges of climate change. It's actually seeing something getting constructed on the ground and taking it from concept to completion, uh, especially in your own back garden. I think people don't always appreciate the job that engineers do. Flood alleviation is one of the, the, the greatest areas to work in because you can do so much for people. Well, each day is a new day. You learn new things. The thing about it, I guess, is, is the, how quickly you see the end result of your, of your work. This year, we have had 17 excellent and varied entries from all over Scotland. In 2015, engineering and infrastructure is as vital to Scotland as it has been for many years. It is clear that politicians and businesses have recognised the value of infrastructure, the challenges that they think short term, and infrastructure is very much long term. The process of visiting and assessing all 17 projects with the judging panel never fails to inspire us and has increased our love of engineering and our admiration for the teams carrying out their work in Scotland. And we're delighted yet again to be celebrating excellence in civil engineering through the Saltair Civil Engineering Awards. There are a long-standing commitment to this important aspect of Scotland's civic life. We know that they're considered to be very prestigious amongst the profession, so we are keen to continue to support and celebrate innovation, recognise excellence in many aspects of Scottish civil and cultural life. And we believe civil engineers a very important part of what makes a quality of life worth living in Scotland. With the, the Borders Railway project, it, it's a huge scheme, 30 miles of new railway through an area of outstanding natural beauty. That amount of construction work is going to be a big challenge, uh, and it was, and we delivered that on time. It's, uh, it's a tremendous scale, uh, as far as construction is concerned. Building a £294 million project of this scale you, over less than two and a half years. Uh, it's a £12 million expenditure per month with 11,000 personnel on site, so it's been huge, intense. So the project was undertaken to stabilise an existing dam at Loch Artlet. Loch Artlet is a feeder reservoir for Loch Catron, which provides the drinking water for Glasgow. So our project required uh, the installation of 64 400 tonne capacity anchors. Um, each of the anchors comprised 27 strands drilled to a depth of 55 metres. During the project we used BIM to record uh, all the drilling records, all our records for the anchor installation and all the testing records. Each of the anchors on the dam are identified with a barcode sticker on top. So in future years when we have to do lift off tests on the anchors just to ensure that they're still working properly, the engineers will be able to access the, the anchor, uh, read the barcode with their iPad and that will actually allow them to access information about that particular anchor. When you're dealing with the Commonwealth Games, you've got a start date that can't move. So it doesn't matter what problems you come across, it doesn't matter what weather you have, you have a date that cannot move. So the constraints upon us were even more so than you would come across in a normal project and we just had to deal with that. We had to engineer our way out of all these problems because it was the very first project where we uh, constructed a track two metres in the air. And how we carried that out was we constructed the track on a deck which was uh, supported on stilts and then above that we then constructed uh, what you'd call a standard track uh, and construction above that. We, we ranged from a sort of maximum of, of 25 athletes working on it at any one time. The largest loading was in the closing ceremony where we had 4,500 athletes and officials jumping up and down on top of the deck, so that was the heaviest loading that we had to take in cognizance of. We are situated in the station master's office overlooking the concourse at Glasgow Central Station. This is Scotland's busiest station, where over the last few years Carillion have worked systematically across the platforms renewing them. 
Uh, we undertook a tender for Network Rail to uh, refurbish these platforms, complete with new precast decks to get the gradients right, the stepping distances off the train right, and make sure that the, the station is actually fit for the next 120 years. Just leading into the Commonwealth Games, we also undertook to do various enhancements in the station, so the entrances at Union Street and also the access is down to platform 16 and 17 at the low level. All these works were undertaken. Safety was paramount for the public as well as for ourselves and at no point did we have any incidents. No trains were delayed and the TAM tables remained consistent throughout the period. Special significance here is we've extended the ferry pier by 33 metres, 100 feet. We did that over the winter and we managed to do the entire job without affecting the ferry service from Ullapool to Stornoway. Uh, this was a challenge that we were set by Transport Scotland. Uh, we knew if we did a traditional build with a, uh, a piled and open decked option, we'd have to put a wind restriction on the berth, which would have impacted heavily on the ferry service. So we opted for a bit of blue sky thinking. It occurred to me that the only way to do this was to actually get the extension in place between ferry ceilings. And uh, I suggested this might be possible and this was met with hoots of derision. Uh, but we were able to demonstrate that it was actually a possibility using casing technology and a single casing which is very unusual because they're normally inversely proportional to the number you uh, install. So one case is very inefficient. But we decided this was the best way to go and we convinced everyone that it could be done. Still a few doubting Thomases, but I think they went along anyway. And so it came to pass. A £21 million infrastructure contract. We've got 1.25 million tonnes of rock extracted, which equates in around 62,000 lorry movements of stone. We actually produced 34,000 cubic metres of concrete on site. This is all actually getting sand into the site, getting cement into the site, and getting aggregate into the site as well to feed that uh, production process. We were in control of timber extraction on the sites, so we have uh, 100,000 tonnes of timber actually off the site as well, and that's under farms control as well. The reinstatement process involved the enhancement of the trails for the forestry users. We also, in one of the bar pits, we actually left that as a lock uh, for local amenity for the forest users. You've got a tidy forest, you've got fully vegetated verges, a finished job, a uh, fully landscaped site, and you wouldn't really see much a uh, sign of the construction process at all at the moment. The special thing about this project was how we were able to marry the new building with the existing building which has been here since 1842. Uh, the project was commissioned as part of the overall Egypt project to work which is ongoing just now. The challenges here were to keep the station running with 4 million passengers a year going through. That is anticipated to rise to 10 million within uh, 15 years. That was one of the key drivers for the project getting done. It was done offline, um, making sure that the live railway station wasn't interrupted uh, during the works, and then it was these sections were lifted in in three-hour possessions. Um, overall, if we were to build it in situ, it would have resulted in a 46-hour week extension onto the, onto the programme. And when, of course, the 19th of December loomed, it was the most joyous moment of my life to see all the customers coming up from the platforms and easily navigating their way out because of all the vastness, the glass walls, the fantastic signage that was in place. To me, the special thing about this scheme was we hadn't had a flood for 45 years in this area and we got this finished just in time so that we protected over 700 properties and forests. So if it wasn't for that today, we might actually be looking at some people just moving back into their homes a year later. Clear out all the accreted shingle that had built up over the last 40 or 50 years was fairly obvious. But the way they have taken the, court, the three bends of the river, lowered the level of the banks at the side, giving the river much more room so that it can get past without coming onto the adjacent land. I didn't expect them to do that and the effect is quite dramatic. The other huge part of the scheme is the pump station up at the top end of the flood scheme, 
which protects a large section of the town. I didn't expect that to happen. I hope it's never used in anger. From a, a point of, of view of sustainability on this project, we spent a lot of time uh, looking at the design. Uh, at the present moment in time, the site has been constructed with 700 housing units on it, which housed the 6,500 athletes. But the way we've designed the site is in such a way that we can actually build another 700 housing units on the site uh, to produce future homes uh, for the East End of Glasgow. Recycling was very important on the village. Um, we tried exceptionally hard to recycle all of the material possible. We managed to recycle in around about 60,000 tonnes of material. We put on our own processing plants onto site and recycled that uh, with the aggregates into different grades of aggregate. We ended up with a two to one ratio of recycled aggregate to imported virgin aggregate. This was a unique challenge for Network Rail. This was the first time that we've successfully reconstructed a aqueduct across a live operational railway. The project involved, uh, in a nutshell, uh, damming up the Forth and Clyde Canal and demolishing a structure that was constructed in the 1840s and utilising the existing substructure to build a new superstructure on top of and then uh, constructing an aqueduct to allow the, the canal to, to flow again. It was unique for me and uh, my, my wider project team so it, it was very challenging and uh, mouth-watering in terms of civil engineering for me. Well, it's a flood wall, it's four kilometres of uh, continuous flood wall which uh, will prevent flooding to Inverness uh, and we've managed to build that along, alongside um, the environmental constraints of all these mature trees which, which really give the, the river and the city its character so we've managed to retain um, you know, all of that whilst building a, a major civil engineering project. It's when you actually look across the river, uh, the wall blends in to the, uh, to the surrounding buildings. I mean, the whole thing is a conservation area. It was designed to, to do that. And when you look at a product on, on, on site, or when you look at the design on site, you can see it blending with, with its surround. And you should have a look how it fits in to, to the natural environment. Uh, I, I think it does very, very well. And combined with the streetscaping as well that was undertaken, um, it, it does offer that emergence with the, um, the city centre. Um, so we're trying to, the scheme, try to attract people to the, to the riverside frontage, uh, which is a scheme, I think it does that in, in leaps and bounds. The children had to produce ideas for upgrading the footpaths um, so that they could be well used for their children getting to school. So they discussed ideas and then came up with the best solutions. The project um, involved three primary schools, North Lancashire Council, a community council and a civil engineering contractor. The children actually um, were involved from the start of the process, from the project, um, basically identifying all the issues that they felt were involved with the paths at the moment and um, right through to the end of the project. So they were involved with the contractor throughout the full process and they implemented you know, their skills from school, implementing, you know, maths, using quantities and things like that to work out different um, parts for the project. So they were involved right through to the end of the project. So basically, um, the children were civil engineers, so they basically got a better understanding of what civil engineering actually is. The paths are well used, um, look fantastic, and overall a very successful engineering project. This is the Shawfield Dalmarnock Smart Bridge. It is the only butterfly arch bridge in Scotland and it, it's called a Smart Bridge because it has the facilities to take different services across the Clyde. So there's the facility to take communication, cables, uh, power and a combined heating and cooling system. So this bridge, in addition to providing a pedestrian transport link, it's also going to form part of the National Cycle Route in Scotland. Further to this, which is why it is a smart bridge, it provides the opportunity that in the future then services can be brought from one side of the Clyde to the other, which will allow the expansion and improvement of this area to form the National Business District, bringing the opportunity for further economical growth into the area.
The project was built over uh, two years. Uh, construction commenced um, in May uh, 2012 and, and ran to November of 2014. Um, it involved uh, collaboration between Fife Council and Volker Steven in a design and build contract. The aim of the project was to uh, enhance the town frontage of Ricordi, which had suffered from uh, periodic uh, flooding. The seawall before was in a dilapidated state. It was prone to overtopping, particularly during easterly storms. It's wonderful now to see people enjoying the seafront and we've provided a structure which allows access for all onto the seafront. The greatest achievement, I think, was the, the minimal disruption that we caused to the town when we effectively shut off the, the whole of the seafront for 18 months. And I think everyone, everyone understood that we had to disrupt slightly so everyone was everyone worked with us. The, the, the new, unique thing about the Benmoor hydroelectric project was the fact that um, Scottish Natural Heritage at planning stage uh, basically decided that a road could not be built to allow it to be accessed for its construction. Uh, and we had to think of, of ways to build a hydro scheme without an access road and eventually with contractor involvement, it was decided to propose to access the site uh, by helicopter, both for personnel uh, and for, for, for small plant and for, for, for materials. Fundamentally, it made it viable, it could be built. Uh, it also made it uh, slightly more expensive to build. Well, basically, if we had built a road, we would have destroyed the environment of the, of the hillside and who knows how long it would have taken to recover. But actually, in terms of protecting the environment, as with most hydroelectric generation schemes, there was an ecological clerk of works appointed and, and his role was to ensure that the, the contractor didn't carry out environmental damage. More and more on, on every scheme now, the, there's a planning condition which requires the appointment of an ecological clerk of works to have an independent overview to protect the environment. Well, in terms of the works that we're doing here, the, the big picture is about creating jobs and opportunities for local people and the investment that will come here in the in the future. The remediation process for, for Shawfield has been one of the most complex projects I've been involved in. Here we've been, we're using new techniques, injecting chemicals into the ground to neutralise the contamination. Calcium polysulfide into chromium hotspots around the site and that allowed us to then create development platforms for new buildings. Without injecting that into the ground there'd be a likelihood that contaminants would get into the Clyde. We're also looking at our culverts and water courses as part of an overall programme of remediation. So what we've done is we've created a new culvert which runs from the M74 down to the River Clyde and the existing culverts that are in the area have been realigned. In the immediate term it's about opening up a new area of the city, changing the perception of the east end of Glasgow and this part of South Lanarkshire. Delighted to be standing here today on Gassy um, showing you our project. Gassi is 178 miles from the National Museum of Scotland as the crow flies. Taking into account road and ferry transport, we're about 250 miles. Being 250 miles from the centre of Edinburgh, um, that presented the first logistical challenge in terms of um, making the, pro the project at Gassi a success. Early on in the design phase of the project, our engineers Fairhurst recognised that there was an opportunity afforded by the high levels of good quality rock on Gassi and on the peninsula Rua Vult. We took that opportunity to utilise that rock and win all of the rock for the construction of the project on site. And by delivering the Loch Boisil Harbour project, we've been able to transform the area, opening up to new commercial and business developments, increase in fishing activity, greatly increased tourist offering, particularly for our leisure sailing and really just the opportunities are vast and we're, we're now starting to see the, these benefits being realised.